All right, today is lesson one six, and we're gonna be looking at absolute value and distance. So the big idea for today is the absolute value of a number and the distance between two numbers on a number line are closely related. So you've talked about absolute value in the past, all the way down to middle school. It's represented by these little bars on the outside. They almost look like parentheses, but they're not curved. They're just straight bars on the outside. And it's the distance a number is from zero. So the absolute value of two is two because it's two units away from zero. And the absolute value of negative two is also two. It's the same distance as positive two from zero, just in the opposite direction. So very often early on in middle school, you just learn that absolute value makes the number positive. Okay, it makes the number positive. If it's already positive, it stays positive. And that is the basics of what we're gonna see with it, but we wanna understand what it actually means. It's the distance from zero. And we start trying to find the distance between two numbers. We're gonna take this into account. Okay, and then one other word that we're gonna use a lot in this unit is origin. And again, that should not be a new word. That's the coordinate zero, zero. Okay, we call that the origin. And very often that's the center of a four quadrant graph. So if all four quadrants are in your graph, the center or zero, zero is called the origin. All right, jumping right in. So we're gonna evaluate each expression. So we wanna take a look, how do things differ depending on where these um, absolute value bars kind of fall? So for the first one, it's three minus 24. All of that is inside absolute value. So first of all, if we have a stuff like this inside, a full expression inside, you're gonna treat these like parentheses and you're gonna take care of that first. Now, there's more to it than just doing it first, but I just wanna make sure that we understand in our order of operations, these would count like parentheses and we would do this first if there was other things going on. All right, so first of all, three minus 24, you're gonna take care of that first, you're gonna leave absolute value alone. So we're gonna leave absolute value and we're just gonna take care of that. So three minus 24 is negative 21. Okay, and then we're not done yet. We gotta take the absolute value of negative 21. So basically how far away is negative 21 from zero? And that's positive 21. It's 21 units away. So absolute value will always be expressed as a positive number. So maybe we can put that up here. Always positive. Absolute value will never be expressed as a negative number because it's a distance and you can't have a negative distance. All right, so for this one, it's just reversed. 24 minus three inside the absolute value. Well, that's gonna give me 21. And now I gotta take the absolute value of it. How far is 21 from zero? It's also 21. So if you notice, if the absolute value wasn't there, this answer would have been a negative and this one would have been positive by reversing the order of the numbers but absolute value is gonna make that positive. All right, so there's some similarities and there's some differences. Next one, this one you can see the operation is outside of the absolute value bars. So we're not doing that first, we're gonna take care of these first. So the absolute value of the three is three and the absolute value of 24 is 24. They're positive, they stay positive. Now I'm gonna do the subtraction because it's not inside the absolute value, kind of like parentheses. So I gotta take care of that first. Now I'm gonna subtract. So now I'm gonna get negative 21. And so let's take a look at the last one. So here, all the operations are on the outside of the absolute value bars. So we're gonna do that first and then take care of the subtraction last. This just becomes three. This just becomes 24. This just becomes 18. Positives just stay positive. So three minus 24 is negative 21. And negative 21 minus 18 is negative 39. All right. Example number two now. What does it look like when we have an algebraic expression? Well, it's very similar. We're just gonna plug in for X and Y and A and B and whatever it is, and then go ahead and solve. So X is negative 40 and Y is 35. So first thing, let's substitute. Y is 35 minus X is negative 40. Since the operation's on the inside of the absolute value, we're gonna do it first. So first of all, minus a negative is like plus plus. So that's gonna be basically 35 plus 40, okay, so 75, 
And then I'm going to take the absolute value of 75. And so my final answer is just 75. Let's reverse the order and see what happens. So we'll put x first, negative 40 minus the y is 35. The subtraction's inside absolute value, so we're going to do that first. Negative 40 minus 35 is negative 75. So notice in this one we got positive, this one we got negative, but we're going to take the absolute value of it. So how far is it from zero? And in the end, we're going to end up with the same answer there. So as we move on to example number three, it's just another way of writing it. When we get to graphing calculators and we have to input them, they'll very often look like this. So we just want to make sure that we understand this means the absolute value of 2 and the absolute value of 20. So all we're going to do is rewrite it. Absolute value of 2 should look like this. Minus absolute value of 20 should look like this. Well, since subtraction is not on the inside here, okay, we're going to have to take care of this first. So absolute value of 2 is 2. Minus the absolute value of 20 is 20. Subtract. And that's negative 18, final answer. Now notice how this one's written a little differently. Absolute value of 5 minus 27. And notice how all of it's in parentheses. That means this whole expression is inside the absolute value. So this would look like this. Okay, and now it's going to act differently. So since subtraction's on the inside, I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to get negative 22 after I subtract. But now the last thing I'm going to do is take the absolute value of this answer. So it becomes positive 22. So you can see if they're separated like this, they get their own absolute value bars. If they're inside the parentheses, then that whole entire expression is inside the absolute value bars. Same idea here. Take a look. The whole thing's inside. So it's 1 minus, I'll use parentheses just because they did, negative 2. Now, one thing that students sometimes get tricked up on is they think they have to take the absolute value of this and make it positive before they subtract. And that's not true. So don't make this positive. You've got to get the entire answer inside and then worry about absolute value. That's the last thing you're going to do. So leave the negatives alone when they're inside here. Do the math and then just apply the absolute value to your final answer. So 1 minus negative 2 goes plus plus. So it's really 1 plus 2. So this is 3. And now you take the absolute value of it, and it's just 3. All right. Let's flip this over and see what this looks like on a graph. So we're going to complete the table, and then we're going to put it on the graph. So nice, easy expression. We're going to plug in these numbers for x. All we're doing is 2x, so just timesing it by 2. So we plug 3 in. If you want to write it in, it would be like this, 2 times 3. So that's 6. Plug 2 in. 2 times 2, that's 4. Plug 1 in, that's 2. Plug 0, 0 times 2 is 0. I plug in negative 1. 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. And if I plug in negative 2, 2 times negative 2, it's negative 4. All right, so these are my points. 3, 6, 2, 4. 1, 2, 0, 0 through the origin, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4. So I'm going to put those on the graph. So notice I've got to put some negatives on the x and the y. That means I need all four quadrants here. So when I draw my graph, I'm going to make this a four-quadrant graph. And just a quick reminder, this is quadrant 1. This is quadrant 2. This is 3. And this is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Okay, so I have enough space to put on 3, 6. 1, 2, 3 is the x-axis. 6 comes up here. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's my first point. 3, 6. Then 2, 4. We're just treating every line with a value of 1. 1, 2, well, you start to notice, I start to notice a straight line here. 0, 0, that's our origin right here. Negative 1, negative 2, 
still in a straight line. And negative 2, negative 4, still in a straight line. So you can connect these theoretically, okay? And that will give you the line 2x. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in our last lesson, we talked about sometimes you connect it, sometimes you don't. If there was context here and this represented something that we wouldn't want fractions and in between, then you'd leave it just a scatter plot, just the dots. But we're just solving for this expression. We don't know what it represents, so all real numbers are fine. We're going to connect it. All right, so I want to see what happens now when I simply change this to the absolute value of 2x instead of 2x. What happens with the numbers and what happens to the graph? Let's take a look. So let's zoom out so you can see both at the same time. So first of all, if you're plugging in 3, it's 2 times 3, so we still get 6. It's 2 times 2. You get 4 on the inside. Take the absolute value. Still 4. So my first two points are the same. 3, 6, 2, 4. Plug in 1. Absolute value of 2 times 1 is the absolute value of 2, which is just 2. So far, the same. Plug in zero. Absolute value of two times zero is just zero. So we're at the origin again. So as of right now, these are equivalent expressions. They've given us the same outputs for the given inputs. But let's see what happens when you plug a negative in. So two times negative one inside the absolute value. Well, first of all, that's going to give me negative two on the inside, but we know the absolute value of negative 2 is actually 2. So my final answer here is 2, whereas up here it was negative 2. So this point is negative 1, 2. And then the same thing is going to happen here. So inside the absolute value, 2 times negative 2. So that's going to give me the absolute value of negative 4, which final answer is 4, where up here it was negative 4. So when I input negative 2, I get an output of positive 4. So clearly there's a difference. These are not equivalent. If you only tested positive numbers, you might not see that there's a difference. So let's put our four-quadrant graph on here and see what happens. So I lowered that slightly, not on purpose. I don't have any negative y's, so it's going to work. So 3, 6. Up here, 2, 4. Right here, 1, 2, 0, 0. So far, it's just like the top. Okay, but here's my difference. So now when I get to negative 1, 2, I'm going negative 1, and instead of going down 2, like I did up here because it was negative, I'm going up 2. That's negative 1, 2. And negative 2, 4 left to up 4. And if we had gone one more, just think about where it's going to go. You're going to follow the same thing, and it's going to end up looking like this. So if I connect this, the positives are going up in a linear fashion, and the negatives are going up. So take a look at this graph. It's like a V, and this is what you're very often going to see with your absolute value is a graph that looks like this. So we want to see the difference. We want to know that these are not equivalent expressions because they're going to give you different outputs for different inputs, and the graphs are going to differ as well.